massive freaking news today as Twitter has announced it's enabling Bitcoin tipping on the platform. That's huge. Also, Ethereum news, SEC news, and celebrities are out there representing crypto like crazy. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's a topic you would like to learn some more about, maybe stay up to date with, you should definitely subscribe to the Lark Davis channel. Also, if you have one real quick second to tap on that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, that would be incredibly awesome as well. By the way, if you want to start earning some safe and simple passive income on your cryptocurrencies, you need to get yourself an account over on Celsius. 6.2% on your Bitcoin, 5.35% on your Ethereum, and 8.88% on your dollar stable coins. If you use the link down below to start your Celsius account, you'll also get $50 in free Bitcoin after making your first deposits. So go ahead and check that out if you want to start earning on your crypto. Now let's take a real quick look at the charts here. Bitcoin made a nice little rally up today, getting back up to $45,000 before finding a bit of price resistance. Now we... I think what's very important to point out here is that this dip here actually put in a higher trough, a higher valley, which I think is a pretty important thing. That really is showing us that, yeah, we actually still have an uptrend intact here. In spite of all of that price drama, essentially all we did is, as I was saying yesterday, come back down to flip this area of previous resistance into sport. Now, Bitcoin is trending back up higher, of course. We do have that 200-day moving, the 200-day moving average, man. I'm tired of talking about the 200-day moving average. Come on, Bitcoin. Let's just get done with it. Have a freaking good rally already, man. Uh, the Bitcoin 200-day moving average, it's support, then it's resistance. It's support, then it's resistance. Well, it's resistance again, so we have to watch out for this here at $45,700 as an area of resistance for the old orange coin here. However, we could be getting a retest of this important area of resistance uh, flipped into, of course, support now here at $42,500. So let's see if we do get that retest happening over the weekend or not. After the big sell-off, volume was down a little bit on this rally. So it obviously a lot of people were committing to that, buying up the dip here, but only so far only so far we got. It's interesting too, looking at how just kind of range bound and relatively boring Bitcoin has been. I mean, if you really just want to think about this here, we've essentially been ranging between $40,000 and $50,000 since the 28th of July. Oh, sure. We've had some little dips below and some little dips above that, but we've spent the majority of that time within that $10,000 range. Bitcoin's just been basically going sideways for a few months now. Mm, Bitcoin. And it's interesting, too, because you compare Bitcoin to, for example, say, Ethereum. And Ethereum's just been so much more bullish as an asset. I mean, look at this. It's been above, well above the 200-day moving average for a very long time. Had a massive breakout beyond that. Incredible price rally. And even now, in this current market situation that we had, Ethereum came back down, didn't quite hit the 200-day moving average, but essentially found this zone as a place of price support where buyers started stepping up. They kind of front ran the 200-day moving average a little bit, and we saw the price bounce back up. Of course, Bitcoin and Ethereum do move rather close together, but we've seen Ethereum basically being much more bullish at a technical level than Bitcoin has been ever since this whole... Uh, recovery has come into play here. So that's a pretty interesting note there for you. Now let's get into this big story for today. Twitter is rolling out Bitcoin Lightning payments on the platform along with the Strike application. So you can now send Bitcoin to and from other Twitter users uh, using the iOS app for Twitter using uh, the Bitcoin Lightning network. So if you want to send 10 bucks to somebody, you want to send 10 bucks to your friend, you can now do that using Bitcoin on Twitter, which is pretty damn cool. Twitter is one of the biggest social media platforms in the world. This is a massive, massive adoption story. So this is very exciting news. Um, 
the the constant conundrum, of course, is how much will people actually be willing to spend any of their Bitcoin? Because you can, of course, do things like tip content creators. If you appreciate somebody's content, you can send them a buck or five bucks worth of Bitcoin. Some people will probably do that just for the, the novelty of doing it. But the real problem with Bitcoin payments overall is that nobody wants to spend their Bitcoin. Everybody just wants to huddle on to it forever and watch the number go up. It's your digital gold. And why would you want to spend your gold? You can just hold on to it and wait for the price to go higher because we're still in price discovery. Bitcoin's still going to get up to a $10 trillion plus market cap at some point. But nevertheless, I appreciate the novelty. I think I'll probably load up a few hundred bucks on my Bitcoin lightning wallet. I'll have to get the Strike Strike uh, Strike app downloaded there and I'll start giving out some Bitcoin to people. It'll be fun. But uh, that's a project for another day. But still, very, very cool to see that we have this massive adoption story here for Twitter. Now, th speaking of the Bitcoin Lightning Network, we can see the Lightning Network capacity has gone up quite a bit uh, this year. This is January 2021 right here. So it was pretty stagnant for all of 2019. This is really when it started back here. With all of 2019, not a lot was happening on the Lightning Network in 2021, we have seen a lot of network capacity going up. So we're up to 2,738 Bitcoin uh, network capacity. So we have seen that capacity for the network rising, which is obviously a very, very positive thing. Most of the network stats for the Bitcoin Lightning Network looking pretty good overall. The number of channels is up. The number of nodes is up. The network capacity, of course, is up. Channel size up as well. So this, I think, is how... The Bitcoin Lightning Network starts to become big. Obviously, El Salvador is using the Bitcoin Lightning Network as well. So that's very important. I mean, two massive use cases for the Bitcoin Lightning Network within just a few weeks of each other being announced. We saw El Salvador and we have now 25% of the population, 1.6 million people in El Salvador have downloaded the uh, Chivo app. They're using the Bitcoin Lightning Network for payments. It's really cool. It's really exciting. Now this with Twitter, I mean, Twitter is kind of even a bigger story to an extent than El Salvador. I mean, El Salvador going with legal tender and all that stuff, obviously game changing stuff here, but Twitter's pretty damn big. I mean, there's hundreds of millions of people using Twitter. They can all now use the Bitcoin Lightning Network to send money to each other. Um, Twitter has in a sense just become a bit of a payments platform with this enabling of the Lightning Network on Twitter. So that's super awesome. I'm super excited about that. And this reminds me, of course, that we are seeing the world's biggest social media platforms adopting cryptocurrency technology. And the most important thing here is they're not building their own blockchain. So, well, okay, Facebook is building its own blockchain. It's been trying to do something since 2018, and it's had nothing but regulatory drama and BS because they wanted to build a walled garden. Reddit was smart. Twitter was smart. They adopted open source technology. Twitter is going with Bitcoin because, of course, you know, Jack Dorsey's a a pretty staunch Bitcoin maximalist. I don't think we'll see any sort of Ethereum-based stuff coming to Twitter anytime in the near future. But Reddit, actually bigger Ethereum fans, so they launched Ethereum-based tokens a couple years ago. They announced earlier this year uh, that they were actually working with Arbitrum, which is something we've been talking about a lot here on the channel recently, a major Ethereum scaling protocol. So they're working with Arbitrum to scale out their community points tokens. Just two of the world's biggest social media platforms using open source cryptocurrency networks. Ethereum for Reddit, Bitcoin for Twitter, and whatever the hell Facebook is doing at some point in the future, I guess will be something else, but... I really like what Reddit and uh, Twitter are doing here. So this is a very cool, very exciting story for Twitter today. In other Ethereum news, Ethereum futures are more popular among major investors than Bitcoin, according to JP Morgan. Say weak demand for the market's leading cryptocurrency has institutional investors turning their attentions to Ethereum. We just covered, of course, in the charts just a minute ago. 
Bitcoin's been kind of boring recently, which is funny because, you know, at some point, Bitcoin's not going to be boring again. Bitcoin will come out and just everybody like, oh my gosh, why didn't I buy more Bitcoin when it was ranging between forty and $50,000? Now I'm on the sidelines. I don't have any Bitcoin. It's just gone up 200%. But Ethereum has been much more bullish uh, this year than Bitcoin. We've seen it outperforming Bitcoin, the Bitcoin-Ethereum pair has been rising and rising. Basically, Ethereum continues to rise versus Bitcoin. But it's been really interesting to see that there's been an incredible upsurge in interest amongst the institutional investor crowd into Ethereum. Now, we had Kathy Wood come out from ARK Invest the other day basically saying that they're looking at a 60-40 split. That's their entire crypto exposure, 60% Bitcoin, 40% Ethereum. But here we have uh, JP Morgan, you know, the, the bankers of Satan coming out saying, hey, look, actually what we're seeing is people are switching demand over to Ethereum. We're seeing more and more investors taking an interest in Ethereum. I think a lot of people are looking at Ethereum and what it does, and they're looking at this as a more interesting play versus Bitcoin. Bitcoin's digital gold. I love digital gold. It's very, very cool. It's got its immediate, very obvious use case for everything else. There's Ethereum. You want DeFi? You need Ethereum. You want NFTs, you need Ethereum. We need one stable coins, you need Ethereum. There's all these interesting things happening on Ethereum. And I think these big money investors are really starting to wake up to the reality of what Ethereum has to offer as a network. Now, look, it's only futures contracts, so let's not get too excited. But still, it's showing a real shift in interest from Bitcoin over to Ethereum amongst this institutional investor crowd. Next, let's talk about Coinbase. So Coinbase is set to propose a cryptocurrency framework to U.S. officials after the SEC clash. Coinbase, they really want to educate the SEC people. They want to educate politicians. And I commend their efforts. It, it feels like a Boy Scout wanting to do the right thing. Like, we just want to do the right thing. We want to get these guys just, they must be so well-intentioned. They just don't have the right information. Come on, Coinbase. Come on, man. You guys just get with the program. You got to pay the bribes, man. You got to buy the politicians. You got to buy the regulators. That's what Wall Street does. That's why Wall Street can literally get away with any crime. You need to pay the bribes, guys. They're shaking you down. They're shaking you down. You got to go out and pay the bribes. The thing is, the current head of the SEC, Gary Gensler, he understands crypto really well. He taught blockchain at MIT. The guy's smart. He understands Bitcoin. He understands Ethereum. He knows what's going on. And yet, he is a shill for the big banks. He's compromised. It's hard to have an honest conversation with somebody who has this kind of agenda. Gary's not a good player. The head of the SEC is not a good player. He's the head of the SEC. What do you guys expect is going to happen, Coinbase? It's unfortunate that we keep getting these these bad players put in charge of this organization, but it's a bad organization. It's an organization that's been designed to keep regular people poor and make sure the rich stay rich. I mean, come on, US has got these like sophisticated investor laws and stuff where if you have more than a million dollars, only then are you allowed to invest in token sales or pre-IPO stocks. What a crock of crap, holy cow. Anyway, Coinbase, I wish you the best of luck. I really do. I think it's a good, honest effort to try to educate officials on the kind of regulations that the industry actually needs. I hope they listen. I'm pessimistic, I suppose, that they will listen and that you'll be able to have honest conversations with them. I mean, literally, the SEC told Coinbase, we're not interested in meeting with you. But again, I commend the effort. They do need education. They do need to get with the freaking program what's happening in crypto and what an incredible opportunity that these regulators and these politicians are preventing average Americans from being able to partake in. Nice to live in New Zealand anyway. Holy cow. So let's move on to celebrity news. So this is, this one made me just, I would, this was funny. So apparently Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg started a anonymous Twitter account called Cosimo de Medici, and he was buying up millions of dollars worth of NFTs and posting about it. Nobody knew who it was. And then Snoop Dogg revealed a few days ago, I'm actually this guy. I've been the anonymous person out here buying millions of dollars worth of NFTs. 
that's hilarious. I freaking love it. It's so funny. Like Snoop Dogg has been out here making a giant collection of really high value NFTs. He's got all kinds of all the all the good stuff in his uh, NFT portfolio. But it's pretty damn amazing to see how much attention all of this stuff starting to get. And it's, it, we're not even anywhere close to the top. This is the thing. Again, by the end of this decade, everybody is going to be into this. Everybody with a mobile phone is going to be using crypto in some way or another. They're going to be getting NFTs. They're going to be getting tickets. They're going to be using DeFi and sending payments and all this stuff. And it's all going to be on the blockchain. It's all going to be using these open permissionless networks. Snoop Dogg, man. Snoop Dogg's into NFTs. I absolutely love this. I'm just... I, it's great. That's great. And the final story for today, NFL star Tom Brady wants part of his salary in either Solana, Ethereum, or Bitcoin. Why not? Why not? He would not be the first um, major sports player to get part of his salary in crypto or to request part of his salary in crypto. Now, uh, he recently signed a deal with FTX Exchange, so he's doing advertisements and stuff for them now. But this idea has always been very, very interesting to me because I know there's obviously you guys are invested in crypto. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be here watching this video. But if you could receive part of your salary in crypto, would you do it? Would you do it? Well, that is going to be your question for today. If you could receive your salary in crypto or just part of your salary in cryptocurrencies, would you do it? And if so, what currency would you want your salary paid in? Let me know down below in the comment section. Very interested to hear if you would take a salary paid out in crypto or not. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.